Okay, third attempt at a live stream. I've had uh, zero fortune with making this work so far today. Um, I promise I'm a professional live streamer, which is why I'm using the webcam on my laptop. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Kale Stoley, and I am an assistant professor of engineering here at Down University. If this is actually working, you are in Fundamentals of Engineering Design, and uh, we are currently live streaming. So apparently, this video thinks I'm live streaming, so, oh yay, it is working. Yay! I finally got to work. Um, that's nice. It's only ten minutes late and uh, three failed video attempts later. Um, anyways, uh, as I said, my name is Dr. Kale Stoli. I'm an assistant professor of engineering here. If you took EGR 101 with me last semester, uh, you may recognize me. If it makes you feel more comfortable, I can do this, um, and then maybe you'll recognize me even more, uh, because that's that's how all of you know me. Uh, now, I am feeling sick today, in the sake of not getting anyone else sick, uh, and the fact that I passed out after my first lecture this morning. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I am not on campus today. Um, I, and unless I get to feeling better, I am probably not going to be back for the rest of this week. Uh, I apologize. Um, unfortunately, that's just the, the way that things work inconvenient timing for everyone um i absolutely hate virtual classes and i really look forward to getting to see you all in person again um because i think that's that's the best way to teach but until then you're gonna have to watch me on youtube um you're gonna want to look at my lavender shirt which kind of shows up as gray the lighting in my room is fantastic um Yay. Anyways, um, what I wanted to talk about today is just give a general overview of the class. So I've prepared a PowerPoint. Um, I am going to go ahead and jump into this uh, PowerPoint. And so let me do that. So here's my PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to forget how to make this work. There we go. Hopefully this actually shows up on your screen. Um, if not, then I don't even know what's going on anymore. Whatever. Um, so this is lecture one. We're going to start, before we get into the syllabus and before we get into discussing the project details, uh, I wanted to give a little bit of an overview of what is design and kind of give a, a summary of, of materials that you would have learned in the last class, which was EGR 101. Um, so to begin with, Let's define engineering. Um, engineering is something that a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about. Uh, no, it's not all about trains, unfortunately. Okay. Um, yes, I got asked that question many times in my life. Yes, it's still funny. Uh, but no, it's not all about trains. Engineering is a problem-solving process. Okay. And that's really all it boils down to. Uh, the modern definition of engineer in the workforce involves people who are willing to problem solve on different aspects of machines, processes, algorithms, uh, anything from a, a computerized world to uh, large scale structures. Uh, engineers are prevalent in every single industry. There are fashion engineers. There are, uh, there are engineers involved in data structures. There are engineers involved in creating uh, internet servers, there are engineers involved in creating toys. Uh, engineers are everywhere. So uh, today I'm, I'm using this very broad definition of engineering as engineering is a, a physical problem solver um, because that's that's kind of what I'm trying to prepare all of you for as engineering students and in teaching you engineering. Uh, you have to be willing to go out there and solve problems. Um, so Engineering is also a very iterative process. Uh, this is something where you don't just do it once and it's done well. Um, that's kind of a miscon misconception that a lot of people have. 
Um, like for example, if you see a skyscraper being designed, you usually just think, oh, well, somebody designed a skyscraper and then they just decided to go build it. Well, it's actually an iterative process. You have to design it. You have to do analysis on it. You have to have like four or five people check on it. You then have to have other people come in and do other design work to build out your design, to which then it goes through a second review. And, uh, and then it ends up going through a number of reviews before it, it becomes finalized. And then usually it gets evaluated by whatever your client is. Uh, it has to go through city planning. The city actually has to check it. It, it's, it is a process. Um, it's not something where, you know, just a couple guys hang around and are like, I'm going to design a skyscraper. Uh, it, it takes iteration. And every one of those iterations uh, involves improvements. Uh, every one of those checks involves people who goes in and spe specifically looks for things and says, well, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. This will work. We need to make sure that this happens. Okay. And it's the job of each one of those specialists to identify the pieces that need to be fixed. Um, one of the critical pieces of engineering is that we are working on physical, real solutions. Now, that, that kind of comes with a, a star. Uh, a computer algorithm is a real solution because it, even though it is not touchable, uh, it is something that is repeatable, it is something that is transferable, and it is something that takes up a finite amount of space, uh, although that space is byte storage, but still... Um, all of that is engineering. We deal with real solutions, as opposed to theoretical solutions, which are, you know, if we could just teleport this thing over there, that would be great. That's a theoretical solution. It's not a real solution. Um, of course, my dog is going to decide to bark right now. Nice. But whatever. Um, and lastly, engineering addresses quality and functionality. Uh, this is kind of the most critical piece of engineering. What differentiates an engineer from a good engineer is that a good engineer has a thorough understanding of what quality and functionality is uh, and makes informed decisions in order to make that happen. Um, so this is what engineering is. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, if you have taken EGR 101 previously, hold on a second. I'm going to pop out and make sure that this is... Hey, hey, it's working. Nice. This is my Streamlabs view. Um, if you have taken EGR 101 previously, uh, these are some of the topics that we have already discussed. Uh, the engineering design process involves four iterative steps. Uh, now... <laughs> I don't know why she wants to, to be in here and then bark at everything while I'm trying to teach classes. It's awesome. I love my dog, but she just, she has a, a vocal cords of, of a small chihuahua, which is true. So if you have taken EGR 101 previously, um, these are some of the concepts we've already talked about. Um, I, uh, I set up the, the engineering design process as kind of a six part problem. First part involves design identification. Um, oftentimes that is done for an engineer in the workforce. Somebody will say, oh man, here's a problem that needs to be solved. I'm going to hand it to you. Um, so it, it usually engineers don't have to do that. Um, so somebody else will do the design identification, the problem identification. Um, and then the last step is communication. This is at the completion of the engineering design process when the engineer hands this off to something else. Um, now, we are going to be doing the communication, and the problem identification for this course is done by me. I'm handing you the problems that need to be solved. Uh, so, really, we're going to focus on the four iterative pieces. Uh, now, the four iterative pieces are problem framing, ideation, realization, and analysis. I have a little bit of a, a discussion on each one of these. Like I've said, if you've taken EGR 101, um, you should understand all of these concepts already, because this is kind of uh, material that we have already covered here in this course. Uh, and in this program, problem framing involves a, a lot of uh, really detailed steps uh, and, and pieces, uh, including understanding of constraints, understanding of measures of quality, understanding the population needs, understanding existing solutions, um, and, and all of those really play into developing what, what you understand about what the solution is going to be. Uh, the ideation process is the next step that comes after that. It's where you 
propose a whole bunch of ideas uh, that could possibly satisfy the solution, and then you end up picking one that, that best fits. Um, the third phase of the iterative design process is realization. This is where you actually go around and you model, prototype, uh, and work towards a, a completed final project. Uh, the last phase is analysis. Uh, and this is where you turn around and you look at your project and you say, did it meet the requirements? How good of a quality is it? Uh, if it didn't meet all the functionality, you have to redesign it because it, it, it was a failed design. Um, you go back through and you say, okay, well, does it meet the constraints? Can it, can it properly uh, satisfy the design conditions? Um, we're going to be doing this in design one and in project one and two. Uh, you're going to be following these exact four steps. It's fun fact. This is how every engineering project is done. Uh, doesn't matter if it's in school, doesn't matter if it's in industry, we will do these four steps. Um, now, We'll talk about each one of these steps and what you have to do for them, and I'll I'll come back to this slide after I uh, introduce Project One um, to you. But uh, just do keep in mind we are going to be we are going to be doing the full engineering design project twice this semester. Um, now, some really important terms that I've already mentioned that you probably need to understand are the terms constraints and measures of quality. Um, now. When I talk about constraints and I talk about measures of quality, I am talking about solutions to an engineering project, okay? I'm not talking about the engineering problem itself. I'm talking about what, what qualities do this, does the solution uh, to a problem have? Um, when I use the term constraint, I'm referring to a yes-no condition. Did this happen, okay? Uh, for example, if I build myself a car but I don't have enough space for people to be in that car. I haven't built a car. One of the requirements in my mind for a car is that it has to have room to carry people. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's just a motorized transport of some kind. Uh, you could call it many other things, but it's not actually a car if it can't carry a person. Um, yes, I know there are, there are plenty of other words, and yes, other people do define this uh, themselves, but in my mind, cars have to be able to carry people. Um, so, if I design something that cannot fit a person, I can't, I will not call it a car. And to me, it does not satisfy the constraint of being called a car. Um, you can also turn around and say, a pencil is required to leave graphite on, an, you know, on a paper. Uh, so if you have something that doesn't use graphite, or if you have something that doesn't leave anything on a paper, it can't be considered a pencil. Now, there are people who push that definition, too, because you have things like the Apple Pen, um, which has a really catchy song. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard it, but if you've got a pen and an apple, you've got an Apple Pen. Um, dun, 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 dun. Never mind. I'd pull it up here, but we're not in class, so we'll have to, we'll have to wait till I, I see you in person. Uh, but the, the idea behind a constraint is, it is yes-no conditions. If I ask if a constraint is satisfied, it is a yes-no question. Okay, Does the car have space for a human, yes or no? How much space it has for a human is a measure of quality, because that's actually a measurable, quantifiable value. But does it have space for a human is a yes-no question. Okay, And we can also say, like, maybe a, a design constraint could be it has to be red. It has to be made out of metal. Um, those aren't measurable, quantifiable values. Those are constraints. So you got to be able to understand constraints, and you got to be able to understand measures of quality here. If I give you a constraint in this class and you don't satisfy the constraint, you have failed the design. If I give you a measure of quality in this class and you do really poorly on that measure of quality, you're still doing fine. <laughs> There's a big difference between the two. If you do not satisfy the constraints, you have not designed the product. If you do not well design all the measures of quality, you can still say you're a good engineer, um, believe it or not. So, measures of quality, these are a series of measurable, quantifiable values. The whole reason why we use measures of quality is because it allows us to compare X and Y. We have a design here, you know, if, if you want to be able to compare a uh, Tesla to a... Uh, um, Honda Civic, 
you have to have some kind of measurable quantities. Like, can they carry people? Yes or no? Yeah. They're the same thing. No, they're not, because they do measure differently. They have different qualities to them. They have different performances to them. And the measures of quality really is what allows us to compare those two things together. It allows us to compare Tesla to Honda Civic. It allows us to compare Dodge Ram to Ford F-150. Okay? Uh, measures of quality are any measurable quantity. This, this could be something that... Uh, you define how to measure it, but it can also be something that's fairly well established. Like, how do you measure the mass of an object? That's, that's a standard that's very well established. We have uh, design, we have uh, uh, measurement standards that uh, have been developed for, for many centuries now on defining what a kilogram is. And that, by the way, is part of the measurement specification. Somebody defined how to measure a kilogram. So... Um, measurable quantities, you can come up with a definition, you can rely on other people to come up with a definition, but ultimately you have to have measurable, uh, quantifiable values that you can compare to between, uh, between designs in order to call them measures of quality. So now we're going to be getting into what is design. Um, design is a series of deliberate decisions in the development of a physical solution to solve problems and ensure functionality and quality. Now, there's a bunch of different pieces to that uh, definition. All of them I would like to parse out for you. Why? Because I'm trying to bore you to death on day one of this class. Uh, also, I can talk about engineering design forever, um, just in case you didn't notice. Um, these are a series of decisions. Uh, usually, a design is not a one and done. You don't just make a design decision and be like, well, that's done. We don't, ne we don't ever need to think about it again. Um, usually you create, you identify that a design decision has been made and then you leave that design decision as a, okay, it's fluid. We may go back and change it. We may be able to adjust pieces of it, but we need to understand why that design decision was made. We need to understand the facets of what makes it a good design decision. And that's really, that's really the engineering part. Uh, now this does have to be deliberate. Um, these kinds of decisions are, are done intentionally. Uh, knowing what the outcome is, uh, it is in advance uh, of trying to make something happen, um, as opposed to just randomly making decisions. Like, well, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm trying to design this couch, and I'm trying to figure out how many seats it needs. I'm going to go into a random number generator, and I got the number 5,000. So I'm going to design a couch with 5,000 seats. Like, that's probably not right. Um unless unless you live in a pre-covid world um and you have five thousand friends you jerk um this is intentionally done to solve problems uh design must solve problems if you're not solving a problem you're not really designing anything okay uh, now that said you can solving a problem can mean a lot of different things so feel free to interpolate that as you will uh, but all design decisions are decisions made to solve problems and they do have to be physical problems these have to be real problems as we mentioned before that's the difference between engineering and you know thinking about stuff uh, it has to be a physical solution uh, and lastly the idea is that it does it does address quality and functionality uh, you have to be able to understand constraints and measures of quality because otherwise you're making a decision and you're like well yeah that car doesn't really need to have tires does it Nah, they'd make it cheaper. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a reason why cars have tires. <laughs> so I'm going to provide four analogies to what design is. Hopefully this gives you a little bit um, better of an idea here. Whenever you go to comp compose music, um, usually the process of composing music is you don't just sit down and write an entire stanza of the entire song, note by note, for every instrument involved. Okay. Usually what you'll do is you'll write a piece, you'll go, you'll write another piece, you'll listen to those two pieces together, you may go back and make adjustments to those pieces based on how well they sound together, you may scrap both of them. Uh, it, it's a process where you do little chunks at a time and you put these chunks together, and then at the end you listen to how the whole thing comes out. And then if you don't like it, you'll go back and adjust little tiny chunks, you may remove very large chunks. That is, it's a very classical design process. 
Uh, so anybody who is involved in writing music, you've been doing design. Um, and and one could say that you know, all people who write music are sound engineers. Um, and there's, there's merit to that according to the definitions I've given you. Uh, cooking is another good analogy that I really like uh, because when you go to when you go to do cooking um, you can either be handed a recipe or you can try to make stuff yourself like hey I'm gonna go make some bread um, I don't have a recipe and I don't really want to follow a recipe I'm gonna start throwing stuff into this pan and see what happens okay uh, now it helps if you have baked something before and so you're not you know just adding Crisco and um, I don't, you know I don't know hot sauce sounds good and you're not just throwing them all into a pan and seeing what happens. Um, it helps if you've done some baking before. Uh, but really when it comes to cooking, the way that you get better at cooking is by continuing to cook. By tweaking little things. By, by trying things. By understanding how the ingredients all work together. By understanding what causes things to happen. Um, so design is very much like cooking because you, you do have to rely on previous knowledge. You do have to... To recognize what you've been doing uh, to move forward and you can say the same about musical composition you can say the same about all of these that's why they're such good analogies um, <laughs> I had this in my presentation and then I completely failed at YouTube live streaming today so it's hilarious um, I've been live streaming for two years now um, and I still cannot figure out how to do this well I still suck at this which is absolutely hilarious um, but whatever your first YouTube live stream is not your best in fact uh, there are always ways that you can continue to improve if you watch any YouTube live streamers usually they continue to get better with time uh, they don't just their first video is not just the absolute greatest thing they ever come up with uh, now there are some people who come up with their first video and that's it uh, but usually they put together a bunch of other videos and they just never publish them um, so there's kind of a difference there uh, but here, you don't really understand what the community wants in live streaming until you've already given them a little bit of what you can give them. And then you adjust accordingly. So it is it becomes an, iter an iterative process. Uh, again, you have to rely on the experience and the knowledge that you already have. Uh, a lot of YouTube live streaming, you benefit by going and watching other live streamers. Uh, and that's a huge piece of it. You know, if you can copy the live streaming aspects that you like from... Uh, this person over here and this person over here and this person over here and that person over there uh, it makes you a better live streamer because you can take these aspects that you know work and integrate them into your own live stream um, and so it does involve a lot of really strong research to be a good youtube live streamer uh, and lastly i'm going to use the the example of fashion um, now i am not a fashion savvy man uh, i wear clothes and that's about as close as i get to being fashion savvy um, and by the way, you're welcome for that. Nobody ever thanks me. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <sighs> that was a terrible joke. I just said that on YouTube. <sighs> so the thing about fashion, though, is, uh, you know, when you when you go to design your first design, you're usually not like, it's it. It's the best I'm ever going to make. I made this when I was three. <laughs> you know, with your sewing experience, you're usually not, that good at sewing the first time you try sewing um, the way that you get better at sewing is by continuing to sew harder and harder pieces by trying new things by experimenting and a lot of people when they when they do design fashion things they'll end up throwing away a lot of designs they'll come up with something and throw it away um, but you you take what you learned from that design you integrate it into the next design so again it becomes very iterative now what you'll notice for each each of these four areas is there are ways to start really well if somebody hands you something and says here here's a piece of music to play you don't have to write it yourself you just play it and you don't have to necessarily be all that good at music composition in order to play a musical piece similarly you don't have to be all that good at cooking if you can follow a recipe to a T you don't have to be all that good at YouTube live streaming if you can follow a tutorial on how to do YouTube live streaming and how to integrate all the pieces in. And you don't really have to be all that good at fashion if you can follow a pattern. So in each one of these, there is a big difference between being handed a solution and actually doing it yourself. The design piece is doing it yourself. The, the 
experience piece oftentimes comes in being handed something. Okay, the first person who cooked something, you know, professionally, they didn't just walk out like, yeah, I've never cooked anything before. Let's try this. I just got out of, uh, you know, preschool. I'm going to try being a chef. Like, nobody would do that. Okay, they've had extensive experience with cooking. And it really is the experience, it is the iterative nature, it's observing other people solving these problems that really make each one of these areas very similar to a design problem. Um, so how do we design? Well, design involves several integrated pieces. First of all, it requires skills. Second of all, it requires knowledge. And third of all, it requires experience. You can't be a good designer without those three, okay? Design skills, this involves things like how do we model, how do we prototype, how do we, uh, how do we develop, how do we uh, create, how do we prototype, how do, how, do we, how do we construct, okay? How do we mathematically analyze? Um, all of those are skills. Now, in some universities, um, in some engineering programs, they don't teach a whole lot of the skills. In this, uh, in, in Doan's engineering program, we focus heavily on the skills because the skills are critical to, to really understanding what you're doing as an engineering designer. Um, the second piece is design knowledge. Um, the most engineering programs really, really dive deep into design knowledge um, because it's understanding how do you analyze a, pro, uh, a system? How do you understand the system performance? How do you assess whether or not the system is behaving appropriately? How do you assess the system under different input circumstances? How do you assess the system um, accurately? How do you measure the error? How do you uh, do all these things? And, and the design knowledge is something that is absolutely pertinent. Um, now, unfortunately, this is a freshman level course. Um, we don't, we're not, I'm not going to be able to teach you all of engineering this semester. Um, I will do my best to teach you what I know of engineering design, but you're going to be continuing to develop in your design knowledge over the next four years. Similarly, you're also going to be learning uh, new design skills. Uh, it's just something that it, it is a process. Uh, you will slowly develop as an engineer. You will gain these things and you will understand better how to design stuff. Uh, the last piece is design experience. Design experience is something that goes kind of, uh, it, it kind of goes under the radar here because uh, design experience is something that is absolutely critical for an engineer. If you do not understand how to, uh, how to check yourself, how to understand if you're doing it right, how to even go about the process, how to feel confident in yourself, how to believe the decisions that you're making and make sure that the decisions you're making are accurate and adequate. That's all stuff that is taught by experience. Um, now, experience is something that is almost impossible to teach in an education environment, um, but we do it anyways. So what are we going to be doing in this class? Well, we're going to be developing some fundamental design skills. So I'm going to teach you how to do modeling, okay? Um, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to do prototyping. We're going to do some 3D printing. Um, and that's, that's really critical to understanding the design process. You have to be able to implement design decisions. And implementing design decisions means changing your model, means changing your prototype. Okay. Um, the second piece is we are going to be gaining design knowledge. I'm going to be teaching you a little bit of the fundamentals of design assessment. Um, this is how do you assess whether or not your design is quality? How do you review it based on other designs? How do you make um, decisions? Um, and we're really going to be focusing on, on constraints and measures of quality. Uh, as a last piece, though, this is, this is kind of the most, uh, most critical piece of this class. I'm going to be forcing you to grow in your design experience. Some of you may have zero design experience, uh, and this may be your first time actually being able to do something that is deliberate. Yeah, I know we did something in EGR 101, but it was like, hey, I have zero expectations for you. Can you build something? Um, we're, we're in a different world right now. Um, this is something where I'm actually going to be expecting a whole lot out of this project, uh, and, and this will challenge you. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to be doing in this class. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit up the syllabus real quick, uh, before we get into the, uh, project one discussion. Um, now this is 
going to be an in-person course. As I said, I cannot be there today. I may not be there on Thursday. It depends on how I feel. Um, I don't know. Uh, we will be using the mechanical design process. It's a book by Ullman. Um, I can look up a picture for it quick if you want. Um, it's a yellow book. It's this one. Um, looks like you can get it for 25 bucks on Chegg. Nice. Uh, I love this book. It's a really thorough book in, in just giving a high-level discussion on uh, the design process and what it is. You will be doing some reading assignments from here. Um, just overall, you're, you're going to have to keep a copy of that book on hand um, for this class. Um, and I would also suggest, if you have a laptops with Windows, it would be really helpful. If you don't, uh, we do have computers in LEAD 233, which is where we're going to be having our class. Uh, and you can check those computers for, because uh, they'll have both AutoCAD and SOLIDWORKS on them. We're going to be doing both of those programs this, this semester. Um, a lot of this is stuff I have to include in the syllabus. Um, I guess we can... We can jump into here. Um, there are four types of projects I'm, gonna I'm going to be giving you. One of them is reading assignments, one of them is quizzes, one of them is modeling learning assignments, and one of them is projects. Uh, now, your project work is intended to continue development, uh, give you experience, and, and really help you to shine uh, as an engineer. The reading assignments, quizzes, and modeling learning assignments are really kind of supplemental to help you understand the design process and make sure that you're uh, being being well-informed designers uh, as a part of you know just your everyday life. Uh, we do have two projects. Both of the projects carry as much weight as everything else. Um, so do keep in mind though that uh, a heavy portion of this class involves stuff that isn't projects. Uh, so you will need to make sure that you're staying up on this. Um, you can do a stellar job on your projects and still fail this course because you've got to be able to show me that you understand every piece of it. Um, this is our course calendar for the, the semester. Um, this is week one. Uh, next week we're going to be talking about form and function. I'm going to post like one video uh, on form and function. Um, you're going to be meeting in person definitely next week. Uh, Tyler Sullivan, as I've said, our, our TA, is going to be uh, hosting a class uh, next week to meet. I have jury duty next week, so I am not sure if I'm even going to be here on Thursday. I know I won't be here on Tuesday, but we will have class on Tuesday. Tyler Sullivan will be uh, sitting in. Uh, we also have uh, Callie Diaghi, our, our librarian, will be sitting in to, to help give a lecture on Tuesday. Um, I won't be there, but... <sighs> the fun of being a professor in jury duty, I suppose. Um, but this is the overall plan. Uh, the first half of the semester, we're going to be working on Project 1. Then after spring break, the second half of the semester, we're going to be working on Project 2. Project 1 is AutoCAD, Project 2 is SOLIDWORKS. Just, it works well that way. Um, so what is Project 1, you might ask? Well, <sighs> Project 1 you are creating uh, evidence to support this argument that you have sufficiently designed a public park with space to meet, play, park, and rest for the enjoyment of the whole community. Okay, that's the argument that you're you're trying to provide. Now, what are we doing? Well, you're designing a playground. Okay, um, when you go to design a playground, I'm giving you the constraints right here. Um, all of these constraints are very, they're very specific. Like here, the community wants to have water fountains, community wants to have a bathroom, community wants to have at least 12 parking spots, community wants to have foliage, community wants to have shelter, community wants to have play equipment. The space has to be ADA accessible and you have to understand ADA requirements to do so. Um, the different zones must be met. You have to have a rest area that has to include a bathroom. You have to have a parking zone, playground zone, open zone, and meeting zone. Each of these zones 
uh, are ways for you to organize your park. Um, I've given you a list of measures of quality. You can certainly add more measures of quality, um, but you have to be able to defend which measures of quality you use, why they matter, why they matter to the community. When you give your presentation at the end of project one, um, one of the most critical aspects is that you show me that you, first of all, satisfy all of these constraints, but second of all, that you have a very solid understanding of measures of quality. Measures of quality are your way of telling somebody how good your design is. If you don't understand measures of quality, then you've done a really poor job of explaining how good your design is. Um, and that just shows a, a really poor understanding of the class material, honestly. Um, what you're going to be required to do as a part of this project is uh, you will have to, um, first of all, two weeks from now, you're going to have to provide a write-up on existing playgrounds, materials, equipment, and ADA standards. Uh, Callie Biagi, when she comes to class next week, she's going to help with a little bit of that research. Um, you're then going to have to be able to give an abstract, this is just a, a brief write-up uh, of your individual components, how you expect your park to look. Um, I'm going to want a first page of your design by February 8th, that's, that's 28 days from now. Um, and then we're going to be doing a full oral presentation that is now two, a little bit less than two months from today. Uh, you're going to be giving your full presentation. Um, and then that Thursday you will need to hand in your AutoCAD plans. So that's the der deliverables for this. Uh, now, I do go into what all is required for your AutoCAD pages. Um, this is a whole lot to go through uh, all today, but there are 10 different types of pages that are required. First of all, you have to have a general overview. Second of all, you have to have pavement structures. You have to have some kind of a concrete. Third, you have to have details on those pavement structures. Fourth, you have to have foliage. This is plants, trees, uh, descriptions of where they are, what they are, how many there are. Uh, you have to have a playground, a gathering zone, rest area, uh, bathroom floor plans, piping diagram. How do you bring in water to this? Uh, apparently, I never finished that sentence. Nice. Um, but all of this is uh, already put up on Canvas, so you can read through this document on your own. Um, now, what you'll notice here is uh, the way that I like to give projects is you are defending the argument. So the argument that I gave you at the very beginning here is that you have sufficiently designed a public park space. Um, that is the argument that you are, are trying to craft as a part of your presentation. Now the biggest piece of evidence that you will have for your presentation is your AutoCAD drawings. Um, but at that time I'm going to be I'm going to be assessing whether or not you have sufficient evidences, okay? Did you understand the problem as it was given to you? Did you understand the community wants and needs? Um, this is where you have to talk about your measures, quality, ADA standards, uh, community. At some point in your presentation, you have to showcase that it actually meets all of, all of the constraints. You're crafting an argument, okay? And here are the five evidences that show me that you can sufficiently make that argument. Uh, now, do keep in mind, you will be required to dress up um, for this project and for the next project. I, I love making students dress up. Um, so if you do not have any professional clothes, make sure to get some before uh, the week of March 1st, because that we will be, we will be uh, presenting then, and you will have to be professional when you do your presentation. Um, it is a piece of evidence that shows me that you're serious uh, when you show up professionally. Um, so keep this in mind. This is just a very general overview of this project. Uh, now, I haven't provided you with this document, um, but I believe yeah, this is um, this is an example of the playground park document that I built. Oh my! Please go away. This is an example of a playground park document that I created for the class last year. 
um, this is something that you're going to be expected to make. Now, in this one, I didn't have piping and I didn't have a bathroom. Um, I will probably add this to this drawing uh, before I post it. This is the reason why I have been hesitant to post this. Um, but this shows each of the different pavement structures. It then gives details on uh, the thicknesses of each different piece. Uh, it talks about foliage, why the foliage was put there. Uh, here's a discussion on the playground. Um, here's a discussion on the structures, and here's where they are. Um, here's a discussion on the bill of materials. So uh, this is this is what I'm looking for for your final project uh, design. This is what well your first project design. Um, I do have a whole lot of videos that I produced last year uh, showing how I built each one of these. Um, I don't really feel like I need to remake them, uh, but I have made them available to you already. Uh, so if I go in here and I go to um, this course, you'll notice that there's a previous course lectures module down here at the bottom uh, anything that says AutoCAD uh, will be pieces to this I'll probably pull those out and organize this so all the AutoCAD pieces are together if you uh, I, I will be asking you please spend some time watching these videos to see how each of these is done um, we'll be talking about it in class and we'll be working in class with our groups uh, to try to make each of these pieces work. Um, I will be stepping you through some of the details in lectures each week um, so that you don't you don't feel like uh, uh, you're getting behind at all. Uh, I know this can be a this is a daunting project. There's a lot of work that has to be done for this project. Uh, but I'm confident that you can do it. I've seen groups do it in the past. And this is how you get design experience, is by doing real projects like this. Um, and certainly coming up with something where you know, you're, you're developing a playground space that looks like this, looks like this, uh, that's a lot of work that will help you as a young engineer uh, to become better. So I, uh, I don't feel bad. This is something that, that I think all of you need. Um, and it's on you. It's on you to, to want to grow. Uh, you can do baseline minimum, satisfy what you want, or you can choose to, to allow this to be something that does challenge you and that allows you to grow in your AutoCAD skills and your professionalism skills, modeling skills, design skills. Um, you can choose your path here. Uh, my goal as an instructor is to help guide you to development of these skills, to development of, of these understandings. So. Before we finish this class for today, um, I am going to say this week uh, I'm going to assign you all modeling learning assignments. Uh, the details for that will be on Canvas. Uh, you will also have a, a reading assignment that's due next week uh, that you will be required to do. Um, we're not going to get breakout into groups yet. Uh, on Thursday, I'm going to be talking about AutoCAD, giving you a general overview of AutoCAD, showing you a little bit of uh, what we can do in AutoCAD. Um, I, I will want you to try to download it on your computer. If you're not planning on downloading it on your computer, um, don't worry about it. You can use the computers in Lead 233. Um, they already have AutoCAD and SolidWorks on them already. Um, so that's our plan for Thursday. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Um, I will be happy to respond, but otherwise, 